For years, I've been recommending one of the first things to do with your smart home is set up leak detection. I have several water sensors throughout my home that have saved my butt thousands of dollars on more than one occasion. And in this video, we'll be going over the steps required to add the Droplet Smart Home Water Flow Sensor to Home Assistant. The folks over at Hydrific, who are the makers of the Droplet, agree with the importance of protecting your home from broken or leaking plumbing just as much as I do, and they are actually the sponsor for today's video. If you are not really familiar with Droplet, it is an all-in-one smart water sensor that uses powerful ultrasonic sensors to track your household water use. Droplet helps you protect your home from water damage with leak alerts as well as provide you real-time and historical usage statistics. And the added ability to add it into Home Assistant via MQTT is just another reason to check it out. So if you happen to stumble on this video without owning one, I recommend checking it out. Using the link in the description or code BTG10 at checkout will save you $10 off your purchase. Take note, the steps in this video do utilize add-ons. So if you're running Home Assistant in a container, you'll have some extra steps involved with your setup that I will not be covering. The first step in getting things set up is to install the MQTT integration in Home Assistant. To do that, go to Settings and then click on Devices and Services. From here, click on the blue Add Integration button at the bottom right hand side of the screen. On the window that opens, type in MQTT in the search field and then click on it. Next, click on the option called MQTT. On the new window, we are going to select Use the Official Mosquito MQTT Broker Add-on. Home Assistant will now go through installing the MQTT add-on, as well as setting up the MQTT integration. This will take several minutes depending on your Home Assistant hardware and internet connection. Now that MQTT is set up on Home Assistant, we need to set up a user account that will be used for authentication. This can be an already configured Home Assistant user, but I like to keep access separated as much as possible. So I highly recommend creating credentials just for your droplet and only for MQTT. To set up the limited MQTT account, navigate to the MQTT add-on by clicking on Settings and then clicking on Add-ons. Next, click on the Mosquito Broker add-on. On the page that opens, I recommend enabling the watchdog so that way the add-on can be restarted if it crashes for any reason. After, click on Configuration at the top of the page. Under Logins, you will enter in the username and password you want to use. Take care to make sure you have the proper syntax for adding the username and password. I'll have a template you can copy in the description below if you run into trouble. Once you're all set, click on the blue Save button. On the pop-up, click on Restart to have the Mosquito Broker add-on restart with its new configuration. Now that the MQTT integration is set up and running on Home Assistant, we can set up the droplet itself. To do this, open up the droplet app. You'll need to have your droplet fully onboarded before setting up MQTT, so if you haven't already, do that now. Also take note that this step does require you to be near your droplet. From here, click on the Menu tab at the bottom of the screen. Next, click on Droplet Settings. On the new page that opens, click on API Integration. From here, click on the blue and teal MQTT Authentication button. The app will then search for and connect to your droplet over Bluetooth. Next, we will need to enter in our Home Assistant MQTT information. Typically, if you have a standard network and Home Assistant setup, you can leave the host name alone. If that doesn't work, then you may need to enter in the IP address of your Home Assistant hub. Port should be left alone, along with discovery prefix and status topic. Username and password will be what we created earlier under the Mosquito Broker add-on configuration. Once all set, click on the blue and teal authentication button. Once your droplet is configured, you can click on Finish, and it should now show up in Home Assistant. We can verify this by going back to Devices and Services in Home Assistant, and we should see the droplet available under the MQTT integration. With its current state, you can trigger an audible notification from your Smart Home Voice Assistant Droplet has detected a leak. if your automation thinks the water flow over a certain amount of time is possibly a leak. Trigger a Smart Home Alarm, change the color of your smart lights to grab your attention, or just turn off your water if you have a smart water valve. In order to get even more out of this integration, including adding our water usage to the energy dashboard of Home Assistant, we have a bit more work to do. For this, we will need to create two helpers in Home Assistant. To do this, go to Settings, Devices and Services, and then at the top of the page, click on Helpers. Next, click on the blue Create Helper button at the bottom right-hand side of the screen. On the window that opens, click on Integral Sensor. The first helper will be used to keep track of the total amount of water flow being reported by Droplet. For me, I'm going to give it the name of Total Water Usage. For time units, make sure it's set to minutes. Under Input Sensor, click on the drop-down menu and search for the Droplet Flow Rate Sensor, making sure to select it. For integration method, select Left Sum. Once all set, click on the blue Submit button. We now need to create a utility meter helper. This helper will be used to add our flow data into the energy dashboard as well as provide us with monthly water usage information. To create it, click on the Create Helper button once more and select Utility Meter. 
while you don't necessarily need to have the helper reset its value ever, I plan on having this one reset every month. So because of that, I'm going to name it monthly water usage. For the input sensor, we are going to search for and select the integral sensor we just created. Under meter reset cycle, you have several different options, including every resetting. Since I want this to reset every month to mimic a water bill, I'm going to select monthly. Meter reset offset will change what day the utility meter helper will reset. By default, it will reset on the first. This is set when the offset is set to zero. For any other day, you'll need to pick the date and add one. For example, if you want it to reset on the 14th of every month, you would set the offset to 15. Or if you wanted to reset it on the 22nd of every month, you would set the offset to 23. I'm going to leave mine at zero so it uses the default of the first. Once all set, click on Submit. Taking a look back at the droplet device and home assistant, we should now see the two new sensors, the sum and utility meter. At first, they will show unknown until the droplet reports water usage. If you have one of the sensors showing as a very long decimal, you can fix it by clicking on the sensor and clicking on the cog on the window that opens. Under settings, change the display precision to what you prefer and click on update. If you want, you can create multiple utility meters. One example is to have one for monthly and one for daily water usage. Having more than one will not impact your ability to have water usage added to the Home Assistant Energy Dashboard. To do that, just create additional utility meter helpers. With our helpers created, we have one more task before being able to get water usage to show up in the Home Assistant Energy Dashboard. And that is a little work in the YAML configuration of Home Assistant. I find the easiest way to edit the YAML configuration is with the File Editor add-on, but you are welcome to edit however you'd like. If you don't have the File Editor add-on installed, I'll have a link in the description below on how to install it. First, we need to have the exact entity name for the utility meter helper we are going to use. To get that, click on the sensor and click on the settings cog. From here, click on the copy icon next to the entity ID. Next, navigate to the configuration.yaml file for Home Assistant. Here we will need to add a few lines to set the device class of the utility meter. I'll have the syntax in the description below if you need it. Just make sure to change the sensor name to match what you have. Once you've updated and saved the configuration.yaml file, you'll need to load the new YAML configuration. To do that, go to Developer Tools and click on Check Configuration. As long as it comes back as passed, click on Restart. On the window that opens, click on Quick Reload. Now that the configuration has been reloaded, we can navigate to the Energy Dashboard. As long as you have initially set up the Energy Dashboard, you can click on the three-dot menu on the right and select Energy Configuration. Next under Water Consumption, click on Add Water Source. On the pop-up, select the utility meter we created earlier. If you're tracking the cost of energy consumption, you can set that here for your water usage as well. Once all set, click on Save. Going back to the Energy Dashboard, you should now see water consumption. If the meter does not show up in the dropdown, or no data shows up on the dashboard, I recommend giving everything an hour or so to get synced up within Home Assistant. That should be enough time to see everything working as expected. With water consumption added to the Energy Dashboard, you'll be able to see historical data for your water usage, which can be really helpful. And with that, we've successfully added the Droplet Smart Home Water Flow Sensor into Home Assistant using MQTT. We can now not only use it as part of the energy monitoring dashboard within a home assistant, but we can also use it as part of automations to help protect our home from possibly tens of thousands of dollars in water damage from failing plumbing. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up so that YouTube knows that it should be shared with others. And if you aren't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications we want the first to know whenever these other smart home related videos just like this one. Thank you for watching, and as always, happy automating!